Okay, welcome everybody and welcome to the people who just joined. I'm Mark Horstrasser, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Nexoya, and I will guide you through this webinar today. We have uh, quite a lot of participants already dialed in and we're very happy to show you today and talk about what Generali did and how they switched from static to dynamic budgeting and got so much more conversions. And um, first, I would like to show you shortly, uh, we use Click Meeting as a tool and on the bottom right, you have the possibility to ask questions. We will, in the last part of the webinar, we will go through these questions together with the two experts from Generali and um, try to answer these questions and, and um, feel free to, to post them there. And with that, and no further ado, I would like to welcome the two guests actually of today. So we have Maurizio Micciano, Head of Customer Journey at Generali and Mattia Valdo, digital marketing expert of Generali, joining me today um, at this webinar. And they will be talking about what, what they did and what we did together as well. And uh, yes, maybe let's give a direct introduction shortly. Maurizio, do you wanna, you wanna kick it off? Give a short introduction about yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank, us. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Maurizio. I've been in media for about 15 years and uh, for a couple of years now, about a couple of years now in insurance, where I'm what you would say is like the head of digital marketing. We call it actually customer journey because we go a little bit broader than just media and marketing. So we have, for example, CRM and other uh, touch points to custom experience. Anyways, uh, happy to join. And um, maybe we will talk a little bit more about how funny this journey was with Nexoya and what we accomplished. Thanks, Maritia. Mattia, do you want to also say a word? Yeah, of course. Hi to everyone. And uh, thank you, Marco, also for organizing this, this uh, live session today. Uh, at Generali, I'm covering the role as digital marketing expert. Uh, so there I'm really responsible for everything related to digital campaigns, from strategy to implementation, from awareness to performance, including the SEA part in the lead for web analytics and all the tool landscape uh, and ad tech. And yeah, very happy to be here and then and to join with you uh, actually our successful use case uh, with Nexoya. Cool, thank you very much, gentlemen. And yeah, as already mentioned, so we first will talk about actually the campaign which was optimized. So Mattia will give you in the first part a short introduction what what was actually happening and where did we did like out seventy two percent more conversion. Then I will give a short introduction on what we actually did together. So what we really worked on. And then the majority of the part will really be questions and answers. So kind of a fire, fireside chat mode where you go through a couple of questions, but also take up your questions and uh, try to answer it to talk about the low and the highlights, obviously, of this engagement and how you can potentially adapt that for yourself or can change the, 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 the changes you need to adapt to actually go there. And with that, I will directly jump into the campaign setup. Um, Mattia, where I think you will give a short insight, right? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, thank you, Marco. So we launched the uh, display performance always on campaign uh, in February 2020, last year. But actually, we started uh, much earlier to build, let me say, the, the baseline to, to build this campaign. Uh, in fact, in 2019, we um, we created all the, the tool landscape uh, for the campaign. We uh, upgraded from the Google Analytics uh, to the 360 enterprise version. Uh, we took the ownership on the DSP uh, that in our case is TV360, uh, but also Facebook Business Manager. We took there the, the ownership and we had it already for Google Ads. So in, really in order to have the, the data ownership, data co governance, but also all the user rights uh, we, we need. And another crucial decision that we took uh, in 2019 is that from 2020 onwards, we will only run campaign with Biddable Media uh, in order to keep really the maximum flexibility uh, um, and also a performance orientation. Um, yeah, what we advertised, uh, actually five line of business. Uh, we had mobility, uh, living, life, legal protection, so commercial B2B. 
um, and we were we are active on uh, on the DSP, on Google Ads, and on social media with our campaign. I would say that uh, also the campaign is actually built on three main pillars. Uh, the first one is for sure that we moved from traditional campaigning, so campaign lasting for three or four weeks uh, with high budget to, to a campaign that is always on air, that is always there because we believe that the user is, uh, is always there and could, uh, depending on some triggers and signal, um, have a need for an insurance product. And this also leads me to the, the to the second pillar, that is the the audience strategy. Because uh, you know, in order to be always on air, we need, of course, to have a um, a strong targeting and a strong audiences, uh, and to, we need to talk to the right user. And I would also say that this was actually the most funny and creative part of uh, when we built the campaign. Because when you think about uh, insurances. You know there are so many aspects and triggers that that can, you can you can enter in you know um, in the funnel of, of of these kind of services. So we really talk to people that uh, would probably need in the in the next period um, an insurance product, but also people that are already in the in the buying process. This was a uh, uh, the idea on the on the audience strategy. We of course used insights from Google Analytics, looking which are the intent audiences performing well, but you know uh, we went over to uh, also a lot of creativity and checking what it's out there to to build uh, something really strong. And you know it's not only important to be there in the right moment, but also with the right message. And I think this is also the third pillar of the campaign is actually all the ads. Uh, we decided to be as dynamic as possible there. Um, we used really an approach where we have different copies, headlines, call to action, images, USPs. And at the very beginning of the campaign, we were live with over 5,000 possible combinations uh, yeah so that we really are sure that one of them will match to the, to the user we are speaking to yeah and already all of these helped us really uh, to gain efficiency already uh, so in the first uh, four months of the campaigns we could reduce the CPM by 75 percent compared to the previous year the CPC by 57 percent and even the CPA by 90 percent but uh, it was still not enough for us. Uh, we wanted to to even be uh, to perform even better. And I think Marco, this is now a good point to to hand over to you, so that you can tell us also from a technical side what we have done with you. Yes, sure. So thanks thanks for going through the campaign setup. So basically, this was the campaign um, where uh, Mattia Maurizio started talking to us. Right, that this campaign was running already a couple of months. And this is where we basically um, said, okay, let's let's look into that and let's see how we can optimize that with, with Nexoia and what we can do there. So what we basically did is, um, or how, how did we reach these 27.5% in, in just three months, right? What we basically did first is they had all these different channels. So they, um, they had four channels running. Um, we had nine months of data. And first, we basically aggregated all this data in one place. So we used... Um, our existing platform to get all the data in and normalize the data so that they're really comparable on, in, in a sense and, and that they're really also kind of uh, on one, one level with each other. And this was kind of the most uh, or the first step before we actually did anything magic or we did any, any step forward. After having the, this data all aggregated and you think about these were like nine months of data um, for every ad set of these 5,000 different creations um, Mattia mentioned, we basically had this data and normalized it and make them comparable. Then afterwards, we predicted. Um, so what we did is basically we checked for every campaign, ad set, and ad, how they performed in the last period, so how they performed in the next nine months, last nine months, and then we predicted their efficiency for the upcoming period. So for example, we took one campaign, let's say campaign A, and then we saw the cost per conversion last week was somewhere like five, let's say five bucks, for instance. And then we, we saw that the, the trend is a little bit negative. So it goes more into six range. So we predicted all these potential trends and all these um, for every campaign and also for every ad and for every ad. And uh, you can do that very easily predictions. Um, 
we do it a little bit more sophisticated. So every time when we predict a campaign, we use 12 different models and check which model is the best one, which works for this purpose. So basically all these 5,000 assets were 12 times predicted and we checked which prediction is the most accurate. After that, we had all the, the data in one place. So we had the normalized data from the past. We had the prediction what will happen next week. And we went on and we actually optimized that. And oh, to mention, yeah, the prediction was not a simple prediction of one step, but actually we, we predicted not just one, like the impressions, for instance, but we predicted different levels. So we basically have the five level prediction. So we, for instance, in this campaign A again, let's take this example, we predicted first the impressions. So how much if, uh, impressions we will get the next period, how much clicks we will we get, how much micro conversions A and B uh, we will get. And the model knew that each of this prediction is depending on the other. So the model knew that it needs impression to get clicks and to get micro conversions. So basically we had this five step weighted funnel um, which allowed us to have this prediction very efficient. So there was not just 5,000 by 12, but 5,000 by 12 by five predictions on the table, so massive amount of data. What we then did with that is we basically put that all in an, optim in an optimizer. Well, basically we put all this data in one place and um, had an, we have an, we built an optimizer for that, which basically then searched the perfect allocation and combination of um, budget allocation for the upcoming period. So when we take, take again this campaign A as an example, right? It has predictions of impressions, of clicks for next week, but also campaign B has that. And then we search, okay, what is the perfect amount of money we need to put for each one to get the best out of it? Uh, meaning that we don't reach any saturation effect, meaning that we have um, can really spend also the money and also that we don't have too much risk, but still risk, which is enough to reach actually the, the goal. So that's what we did. And after putting all that in optimizer, basically you get a receipt, which tells you, okay, you know, after aggregating the data, predicting what will happen next week, optimizing which combination of this data might be the best one, we basically then proposed to uh, adjust the budget on certain campaigns, channels, or ad sets. So um, for instance, we said campaign A should get 20% more budget next week because this um, this platform is the trend is very good and the efficiency goes down for conversions, for instance. But platform number B or campaign number B is going very bad next week. We see there are a lot of competition in there. Um, the trend this is negative on the CPA. So we propose to remove the budget. That's basically in a nutshell what we did together and uh, what we did in, over these three months. So we did almost every two to three weeks, we did one of these iterations where we gathered all the data, predicted it and optimized it to figure out what to do next, to give actionable insights to, to the team to actually change their, their settings. And then this is what resulted out of it. So you see here um, the, the um, Y axis is here a little bit blind out, but you, you can get a notion of it. So this is the micro conversions um, we we got over this period. So you see September to November, this is when the campaign was running. And you see the you see three lines here on the chart. Um, baseline is basically our prediction or, or the calculation, what would have happened if nobody would change anything, right? So this is basically um, taking the actual cost of what we pay in the market for, for calls per click and calls per impressions, but multiplying it with the actual a budget, which was assigned initially. And then you have the blue line, which is actually what Generali got. So you see how, how much more uh, Generali was able to realize on this, uh, on this micro conversion step. And then you got the, the green one, which would be the best possible um, allocation. So you see after the first, first phase, after the first optimization, we were very close to that. And we were able to, thanks also to the agencies um, and to Generali itself to really put all the proposals into place and really get a lot out of it. And we got, and in total, we got 38.4 percentage more micro conversions over this whole period cumulatively. And when we go one step forward, conversion B, which is the most uh, interesting, most important one for generally, there are also the 72.7% com, comes from, and this is also where the title comes from. Um, 
you see basically that the baseline when we would have done nothing is again the orange one and then you see the blue one and you see already in the beginning we will come to that a little bit later we we were not always able to really adjust all things some micro conversions were okay we were able to get them but here in the conversion b we we had some troubles um to really adjust the budgets correctly in the beginning we will talk about that a little bit later um but then afterwards like after the second iteration you see here after the second red arrow we're really able to to realize a very nice uh, uplift from the baseline and you see here even we would have 10 percentage more or almost 10 percent more uh, with regards to the baseline so i with the perfect allocation that we even get 81 percent this is obviously a cumulative um perspective so we always calculate that up but it's still uh, very interesting and obviously amazing results also for for, for us to, to share here. Um, but today we not want to share, hey, everything is fancy and everything is cool, but we really want to also share how did it came to that? What were the challenges? What were the low end highlights uh, on, on this journey? And um, for that, I would basically go into the, the next stage of this webinar, and which is basically we will talk about what actually happened. And uh, Mattia and Maurizio will, will share some insights uh, also challenges which they had maybe internally or or we had together obviously i mean it was a project where we had huge ambitions and uh, that's that that's what we now we now to do today i also see first questions already came in um i will shortly before we jump in that again on the bottom right somewhere here no here sorry i'm mirrored here you have the little question mark or you can put your question in so feel free to ask questions and we will go through them uh, step by step now, first, obviously, I, I need to ask a more personal question uh, to you guys. Like, how, how did we initially convince you to at all start working with Nexoya? Like, how, how did this go, maybe, Mattia? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can tell maybe something about that. Mm, actually, uh, you were the, the why, as, why we get, get to know each other um, is uh, you were looking for digital marketeers uh, to do interviews, actually to develop uh, your product and to bring it um, to bring further evolution on that. And I was one of these uh, happy digital marketeers uh, to, to go through the question with you and also the interface you were building. And uh, you know, when, when I looked at the way you work and the interface you build and, and the stuff you have in the pipeline, this this is, was actually the, the moment in which you really convinced me uh, because, um, you know, uh, the, a lot of people are talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, these are kind of buzzwords. And there are also some solutions when we look only at certain tools. So for, for search, of course, there are a lot of stuff, but when you look at the 360 on the cross-channel uh, optimization, um, then then there are not uh, any kind of so easy applicable solution. And, and uh, you know, I think this was also a, a major point. Uh, that you have built something that is scalable, uh, that is in somehow also standardized because you, we can simply connect our tools to your interface. And this also makes it attractive then also from a pricing point of view. Um, and so um, after we, we really um, yeah, asked you to, to actually do an audit uh, on our campaigns to, to simulate a, a prediction, and um, and there we could already see that we have a potential in, in conversion uplift of uh, 24%. And so after discussing it uh, also with Maurizio, uh, then it was just a matter to, you know, find a way to, to start a pilot with you, even if it was not uh, foreseen uh, in our planning. Cool. Yes, yes. No, that, uh... Yeah, for me, it was also very, very interesting to get your feedbacks in. So it was very cool then to start a project and really try to get most out of it. And I'm obviously very happy that we got there. Um, now, I mean, we talked before about the 27%, right? Which sounds great. But I mean, from your perspective, and to be super barely honest for, for all the audience, right? How easy was it to get there? And how easy was it uh, the journey also for, for, for you to go through that? 
Marco, it was not 27, but 72. Huh? Let's, no, uh, <laughs> let's be precise on that. <laughs> no, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. Never yeah. trust a number you haven't put there yourself. No, that's what they say. 72.5%. Yeah. Um, sorry, yes. Yeah, you started no, with no. 24, so I was. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. Yeah, sorry, don't worry. No, I, actually, I mean, it's a great, great result. And, and uh, you know, normally great result comes also with uh, i would say 100 percent effort or even more uh, and the commitment and i think the commitment was of course there from our side but as well on your side to make this pilot successful and i have really to mention that also the media agency then who um supported us from the beginning they were really uh, curious also about this collaboration and you know i i really believe that great results come first from skilled people and i think that on this project we had really uh, a lot of skilled people from your side our side and then the, and the media agency and this was you know this was leading to to this uh, great achievement because of course there were some uh, difficulties some challenges but we really worked in a in an agile way all together and with a problem solving uh, culture uh, mindset and and i think this is really i mean this was the, the key factor number one to to get to this result mm -hmm. cool yes um yeah happy to hear that i mean it, it was yeah you're right it was not always easy but we got to the point i mean from the from the um and when we look a little bit behind the scene maybe on your side Maritia, right what was what was your perspective on the project and what did you want to solve with it because you probably had a different perspective as well right on the top. or i mean 70 percent looked nice in the beginning and then 72 was even better right or were there any other i mean of course we couldn't expect 70 50 40 30 100 we didn't know right mm -hmm. And the marketing is such a, it's a very funny industry, actually, because if you are 1% better than your competitor, you're actually the best on the market. So maybe sometimes you are happy with 1% or 2%. <laughs> but um, honestly, when I was looking at these tools, I've been, been going through this journey for about like seven, eight years, maybe, even before joining Switzerland and back then the media agency business. Um, I was pretty convinced that, you know, as a planner myself, I started as a planner like 15 years ago, like a CPC guy. And what these guys are doing the whole day is basically they're sitting at the desk and uh, crunching uh, interfaces and crunching Excel reports. And at some point, you get the understanding that maybe it could go the other way. So back then at Media Comet, now at uh, Generali, what I was pretty sure about is why is a marketer always the guy who cannot give through accountability? like real accountability other than some Excel reports, right? So actually, when we were looking at you guys, it was more about the accountability. Because marketers, especially, I mean, every marketer is faced with the ultimate challenge of giving accountability to management, and management has to give accountability to the chief financial officer, because at, at the end of the day, we want money. And we need to show that with that money, we bring, you know, engage customers and we sell more contracts. In this case, we sell more of our amazing, fantastic insurance products. But um, um, it's not always easy to do that. And uh, we have a habit of going around uh, the shop and telling people that we have many clicks, that we have many likes, that we have many conversions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, let's face it, this time is about to end, not just because the cookies and stuff like that. It's really about the business impact. So what I liked about that solution, I mean, you guys were not the only ones. We we were purviewing but what i liked about that solution is it can really tie back every media dollar to a marketing effort to a marketing result and this is what i this is what i liked mm -hmm. i mean i tried to keep the answer short but yeah it's really about yeah, accountability yeah, no, no. If, if you ask me yes i mean when when we in, introduced the the process which also comes along right we suddenly started to really switch from this one year budget or like channel bound budget to a very like frequent dynamic changes right so we we told you guys and obviously the agencies like hey now we move from publisher a to not name names to publisher b and then the other way around um fairly dynamically like the platform itself work as well i mean what are what are also management changes management challenges Maurizio, which you had to kind of convince your management we now switch from a to b and to c more frequently and you know 
there are no no dinners involved in between things like that or was this totally easy with your mind with your there's no free lunch they say no in finance <laughs> there were maybe some dinners <laughs> uh no i guess uh, i don't know i guess this is i would say maybe this was more a question for Matthias. so i i don't know how <laughs> often we actually switched them but i guess we switched them a lot I guess we took money from Google and we moved it to that player or from that player to Google. This is, I mean, what we were expected to do. This is what we what we wanted to do. But I guess this goes case by case. So there might be some, I don't know, industry flavors or differences in the maturity of the marketer and its agencies. I think we are a pretty mature marketer and we have pretty mature agencies. So we are lucky on, on that side. So people who like to experiment and try and try new things, right? Um, what we now knew when Matthias started with the always on approach is, uh, well, for once we needed that, of course. I also think that in 2020, every competitor, so if you say Allianz, AXA, Zurich, how many other, Mobiliar, et cetera, I mean, they must have one of these cool biddable media setups. They must have an always on campaign, or at least I hope for them they do. So this is okay. It's also like a must have, but it's not what's gonna bring us beyond. So, I mean, we looked at these tools and um, after many years of failures and successes uh, we needed really like you said a support for campaign allocation a support for campaign planning mm -hmm. and uh, i guess predictive analytics it's the way to go there is no question about that you will see now google and all these other players they already have or they are expanding the effort in building you know prediction tools within their dsps but at the end of the day what's always missing it's going to be a while still i think it's the budgeting decision across all channels because google is very good at optimizing google facebook is very good at optimizing facebook and so on but at the end of the day you need someone who does this right so is it again the guy doing excel or is it maybe something better some some setup where you have supportive tools like your tool so this was mm -hmm. um this was basically that's it huh? mm -hmm. that's the thing mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and actually, if I can add something on the on the Excel topic, um, because you know, I think I have nothing against Excel, by the way. Yeah, I love it. No, no. I mean, we, we all have to re rest Excel. in peace. It's, it's not about Excel, but um, I think when we talk also a little bit about change management and what we actually also find find out, then when we uh, when we work with you. Uh, you know, we were doing the campaign reviews before, uh, of course, by Excel reports, uh, one Excel for each channel. And uh, in our case, where we have a really complex um, campaign, that actually one campaign in the tools are a lot of campaigns and a lot of data. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the end of the day, we were looking at the Excel, the agency uh, was trying to find out the insights, then these insights were discussed during a call with, with me, with the client. Uh, I also looked at these reports. Uh, and at the, at the end of the day, you know, you, you kind of try to say, okay, I think that if we do that, we are going to perform better. So it's really like more, even if you have the data, it's a little bit more feeling driven. Mm -hmm. And and on your side, it's, it's a really data driven approach. And at at one point we also decided with with Dentsu that it doesn't make sense anymore to have this classic i would say campaign reviews but we can replace it by the optimization rounds we are doing with you and 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 i think this was a a big change in in, in mindset and, and 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 process on our side mm -hmm. and and if if i can jump back also to the discussion on the publisher i think on that this was not an issue you know to say we go from publisher a or b but of course, and then here Maurizio did also uh, done a great job with the management. What we needed to ask is also certain flexibility to move budget between line of businesses, because yeah. you know we have uh, like different uh, products, um, uh, different people that are in charge of this uh, line of businesses. So here we we then really had uh, also I have to say thanks to to, to the management that supported us and say yeah go for it try it it's it's a pilot uh, we understand that you need the flexibility and to have to get the maximum out of this, mm -hmm. this pilot and this was actually really cool for us mm -hmm. yeah i think we are lucky in that i mean we have a we have an r ourselves management that is crazy about experimentation and technology so that's the lesser problem but i think yeah the uh, the cultural and political <laughs> let me say sometimes political issue of moving money from a to b is uh, is a different game huh? mm -hmm. 
because I think to make an analogy with, with the finance industry, I think we, we talked about this a few times, is um, especially financial trading. Digital media is a very volatile market. So I think everyone understands that the CPM or the CPC or the CPA, well, all, all of them actually, they are varying day, day by day by day, 24, 24 seven. My God, there is so much data and signals and variables. We are now actually at the stage of big data, if that word still means anything. So it's easy to sell the story of, you know, the single brain cannot handle this anymore. Let's let's buy tools. And then you have the tools, and now you 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 switch from the car insurance to the house insurance money, and then questions pop up. And your case might be solid, but still there is a goal within the corporation to reach certain sales across the car, for example. So this is where you have to work a lot. This is where the political side takes uh, takes the lead over the tech side. No, and I mean that's that uh, as this worked so nicely. This was the seventy-two percent, right? I mean, I mean, now now we talked about everything worked smooth, right? Were there any low lights which you saw? Or yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's never like you know, it's never. If, if if I think about these big players like buying other small players, it's not like Adobe tomorrow buys Nexoya, right? And uh, within twenty-four hours, maybe maybe you do, and within twenty-four hours, Adobe becomes the best uh, predictive analytics machine. That's that's gonna take a long time. Like it's a, it's, it's a long road. It's not like buying a server. And we have it. So it's not like buying Exoya and we reach 72%. So in the making, in the back office, there's a lot of things going on that are beyond technology. This is maybe, maybe Mattia, you want to speak about the low lights, but I think there is some, you know, there is these things, not just the setup doesn't work or the click, uh, the click rate wasn't as expected and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, no, actually, of course, there were low lights. Uh, and and I, I can only also really honestly and transparent, I can say that the first optimization round uh, was a total fail, actually, because <laughs> we, you know, we had a kickoff, we it, it seems that everything was clear and fine. And, and we, we run the first optimization. Uh, but actually, you know, the first optimization was uh, really foreseeing that we change the budget in the tools on a daily basis uh, manually. Um, and, and you know, there are plenty of campaigns that we need to shift, shift it manually. And from, from a resource point of view, this, this was not possible. But we had also other challenges. Uh, we had, uh, you know, the, the prediction was built on a daily basis, but we had campaigns with a lifetime budget. Mm -hmm. So we needed to find solution also for that. Um, um, Nexoya launched a campaign manager connector at that time when 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 we started the pilot, and we we thought, okay, with that we can connect also to the then to the DSP data, but we found out that not not every data is is there, so we need also there. Then I remember with Luca, your engineer, we we uh, we, we set up a call and built together a data studio report to get all the data in a structured way for you that in order to 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 still run the optimization, so. As you can see, we, we had some challenges to face, but I have also to, to say that we learned out very um, uh, fast out of the fails. And, and this also thanks to the fact that re we really worked agile together and, and mm -hmm. you know we all put the brains together uh, to find all possible solutions. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously we also took a lot of things with that, right? In the meanwhile, we have adapter for TV. 360 and we also have a Bing adapter in the meanwhile and things like that. So also campaign manager now is, is, is a fully and the, the changes don't need to be manual anymore. We have now automated budget change uh, or basically Nexoya starts the process where, where the Nexoya can start the process on a, on a click basis. So that's that's we we invest a lot to exactly avoid that in the future. But yeah, I see. And the first the first uh, iteration was also uh, where we didn't include the agency yet, right? So it was like there was the meeting after where we basically kind of involved all the parties who actually did the changes, which uh, for, for me was also a, a good learning to really early start this process, right? To make sure that the involved parties are on the table from the beginning and then everything is, is way smoother. Yes. But then after the second optimization, we got we got quite something out, right? Which brings me yeah. to the highlights uh, um, on it, right? Where, well, what were the highlights for you? I mean. I mean, apart from the 72.5% or 27 or 24 or however you want to call it, but apart from that, what were the highlights for you? Like how the, the project went and how these three months? Yeah, I, I think the highlight for me was, you know, we, we report every week the performance uh, of the campaign in 
in the marketing team. And I think the highlight for me and Maurizio was to, um, you know, to tell to all the people that CPA is going down week by week. Uh, I think it was like one of the highlights. Good news every week for all the team, mm. uh, seeing also the, you know, increased conversion. Um, but I think that, the, I mean, at least for me, the biggest highlight was the fact that, you know, we were quite over benchmark uh, in terms of what we gained in, in, in uplift, in conversion uplift, even for you guys. Uh, and I really believe that this this is also thanks to the fact that you know we decided um, in nineteen actually to really move to an always on approach where we are always live with, for a longer period. And I maybe Marco you can comment on that, but I think that this was also helpful for the models to learn in each optimization round even better, uh, and you know to really get this this maximum result. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean the the. The longer the the frequencies are, and the longer the, the, the seasonality is, the more data you have, the better are the models, and then the better is the performance. So, I think that that made us possible. That I think at the second optimization, we already had twenty eight percent or something, and this was only possible thanks to the historical data. And that's clear. Right? We usually on not start before like one week, but ideally we have more, and um, so that's that that that's exactly correct. Yes, yes, and and from your side, Maurizio. What were for you the highlights? I mean, obviously going to the board with C dropping CPA is clear, but <laughs> it can also backfire, right? Uh, sure. Going, sure. Go going back to the analogy of financial trading, the market can always grow. Yeah. <laughs> at some point, at some point it will go down. Um, now the there were none, Marco. It was all perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no highlights. Everything was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. No highlights. No lowlights. <laughs> all perfect. Cool. Um, Yes, uh, I mean, now we have a couple of questions coming in. I see a couple of them in QA. And so let's pick one up, which actually fits quite nice into the thing. I just uh, published this from Walter. And the question is, when, when you keep changing the media budget, how can Facebook and Google's own AI optimize? Some say you need to give them time to optimize their respective allocations. Um, yes, I, I can take that if you're OK, guys. <laughs> I mean, basically, we we uh, we don't optimize before a certain amount of days if new campaign starts, right, um, Walter? And afterwards, when we what we do is basically we predict the efficiency and then adjust the budgets. Now, when they are already running for a while, these budgets adjustments are fairly go go fairly fast. So they usually adopt it, and then their own AI is adopting it also fairly fast. So we don't optimize the campaigns in detail, right? We don't know if whatever. Um, blonde color or black color um, people would work better but we just look at the noise of the portfolio right on a high level so that's kind of the the, um, the the reason for that so they they do that very fast if the campaign is running for a while in short right and as we only move budgets on the portfolio level on a higher level they just absorb that going forward and we saw the predictions are fairly accurate so that means it it, it works very good um and then, I mean, now we talk about, um, I see just see another one coming. What do you label as, sorry, I will publish that. Uh, what do you label as conversion, quote, policy sold? Uh, yeah, what, what was conversion ABC, a micro conversion? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I would ask the same question if I, were, I was uh, participating. So good question. Um, yeah, actually, micro conversion for us was, um, was actually the to people to start the, the premium calculation. Uh, this was the micro conversion, so the start in the in our calculator. And uh, then we had this conversion A and B. These were both hard conversion. Uh, one was really the direct sale, uh, so people buying the product online. And the other one was a request for a quotation, but after they really went through all the calculators. So not simply one form, but uh, a calculator with uh, yeah three four steps and even more. Mm -hmm. Yes, sounds good. Now a lot of questions are coming in, so I think that am I ready? I think that answers your question. Marco, right? this is for you as well. I think. Yeah, what is the what is the minimum time period of historical data required for a tool to generate predictions? I mean, yes, we we when we start a new uh, onboard a new uh, customer, we usually say minimum eight days. 
right? So we need to see one week. Then we start doing first predictions. Um, ideally, we have more. The more, the better. If we have years, that's even better, right? Uh, but usually, we, we say we need eight days, and then we start um, doing first predictions. Um, I hope that answers your question, Matteo. And um, I see the next question is already coming in. Now we, we open up the question mode very fast. Um, the next question will be from Stefan. Would the results be scalable by having more budget? If yes, why didn't the board increase it? That's probably more Mar Mauricio. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are. Um, I mean, don't wanna don't wanna reveal too much, but yes, we are building. We are using these type of methodologies to actually go a little bit farther than the conversion. So we are trying to model what happens after the conversion. So, for example, when say a lead, when a lead goes to the agent and to specific agents in specific agency or specific regions or to the direct team, for example, because we do have mostly of what we do online is a direct business. Uh, we have these numbers modeled a little bit beyond Nexoya. So we have own data scientists and an own data science setup here. Uh, it's something I'm very proud about, actually. And uh, anyway, we have done a case that we are now presenting more and more to the board. There will be a meeting at the end of the month. Uh, we have a support of the CEO and the criminal in person. He really likes what we built there. So they could be actually uses a little bit broader than just media, you know, because actually what we are doing is we are predicting how much we're going to sell. And we can do that on different levels, on uh, sales channels on regions on languages on products and yeah like you said why wouldn't we if we spend uh, one media dollar and we make 130 why wouldn't we increase the budget to two three four media dollars and so on mm -hmm. anyway budget is by definition fin fin finite so <laughs> there would always be an end to it right well there, there will be a limit on the market right so and the model, at a certain point, the models will saturate. Insurance is a very economy. saturated market already. But so yes. as you know, I mean, if, if this was automotive, okay, it would probably be a little bit more bolder. Insurance is a market that is, especially in Switzerland, it's a bloody market, right? Where you have high, high retention rates and very high long-staying loyal customers, which is amazing in terms of financial planning. And therefore, there is indeed even a mega, mega appetite of spending millions, millions, and millions like other brands have to do. If you look at the other competitors, okay, we are a relative mid-sized player, small mid-sized player compared to, for example, AXA. But it's not like AXA spends 10 times the money we have, you know? So there is like a limit on the market. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, our board is actually pretty much aware of what we do. They like it. And I think that 2022 will be a very interesting year. Yes, absolutely. And I'm also happy to restart our efforts there, obviously, or continue our efforts. Um, I see now a lot of questions coming in. I can take a, a short one, which is, is there a minimum of necessary ad budget to generate enough data for Nexoya? Yes, we, we usually say if you have, um, you should have more than 10K of budget per month um, to add all that it makes sense in general. Um, if you have a very high CPA and you want to optimize on that, then that's that's more difficult than you need more. But usually when we, we say, if you have more than 10K, we can, it makes sense to start talking um, and look at it. And I see also one from Chris. Could you comment on how much effort was required to set up and get this running, including integration with data sources? Um, yes, I mean, the, I can comment on that. Or Mattia, do you want? Yeah, I can, I can comment as well on that. I mean, to be honest, I think here here I want really also to make the point that you know we we had the advantage of having the the ownership of the tools of every tool. So actually, the connection with the Nexoya interface was something I could do. I can do logging in their interface with you know some clicks, allowing them to to uh, connect. Uh, I don't know if this can always be the case for everyone, especially if you don't own the tools, if maybe the, the tools are owned by the agency. Uh, so, you know, they have maybe this DSP where they don't only do the campaign for you, but for 100 uh, clients, I could imagine that there, you know, you have to have more uh, discussion on uh, maybe also from a security point of view that, that I could understand. But but if you have like the ownership of, of the tools and, and, and you can connect them, it's something you can really do in five minutes. Uh, then, of course, all the the setup, looking into the data, um, also 
make the data you know work together between the tools is something you have to spend some time with Nexoia like explaining them how the campaign setup is but they are they have really smart people and you know you don't need to explain them one hour the, the stuff they really understand it in a very fast way and then can really adapt to your needs yes i mean it's yeah it's basically what Matthias said right we have uh, we are partnering we have 35 integrations all the big ad platforms are are there and most of them are just click grant access next so you as a as a partner with most of them and then you, you directly we directly get the data and then usually we have a in 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 the new customers we onboard we have a 45 minute onboarding where we shortly go what is your naming convention what are your goals what are your weights how come how many conversions do you have what they mean um, things like that to just that we can configure the models correctly and then start the optimization. So that's the that's kind of the effort. Um, now I see more and more questions coming in, but but still I would like shortly to talk about the future, right, uh, Maurizio and Mattia. I mean we 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 now uh, I mean we keep optimizing uh, your campaigns, which is amazing. But there's also other things happening in the market. Um, things like the no co cookie uh, third party cookie problem. Uh, attribution modeling discussion and things like that well what's your take on that and like uh, apart from what we did i mean we next so doesn't work with personalized data right so we didn't do any tracking we just take the statistical noise and make that out of it and um, but what does these topic mean for you guys if so you, you are a you are a privacy first uh, solution <laughs> yeah i mean i mean we, we know that the privacy will come when we no i'm kidding three weeks i mean ago the, the there well, there seems there seems right? like th this year there seems it seems like there cannot be a discussion without you know the the topic of the cookie cookie coming cooking going and stuff like that, yeah. which is funny because actually this discussion is fifteen years old so I've been yeah. been around for quite some time and I think every year it pops up again and if it's not this year it's next year, so I would say of course we'll be ready on the compliance side of things like consent management platforms you know there's all the new musts that also in Switzerland at some point. You would need to have, and of course, we will do that, and I guess every marketer will do. Um, with regards to media and tracking, I mean, we've been, I think, uh, I think we've been ready for quite some time for the cookie disruption that still I would like to see if it's really that disruptive. Uh, you know, Google will pretend, but then eventually they come back. And um, one side we're looking at is, of course, modeling via statistical methods. So they all, the whole, let's say, non-deterministic type of tracking in attribution. So not really one-to-one -one attribution or cookie-based attribution, but still we need to uh, track the, uh, the results. So there's, there is uh, discussions about, uh, of course, old tools that actually are now very modern all of a sudden, like marketing mix modeling. Everyone is talking about it. Again, it's like a tool that has been around for 50 years. And therefore, also guys like Nexoia, we need you because, of course, you do the whole statistical work that we probably not always can do by our own, or we don't have, you know, any resources for that. And um, there is learnings from other disciplines. Um, I also have the CRM team here, and what we do is uh, with them we have always done cookie-less campaign tracking. So maybe they can, for once, teach us something. Uh, on the other side, on the other side, uh, we'll make news of the. Of all these new privacy first uh, how they're called now privacy first ad solutions uh, google and all the americans now they will come with their things uh, i think google matthias you know this better how is it called now federated learning of cohorts so they will of course try to mask and hide the individual and try to organize groups and uh, clusters i think this is very interesting still i don't know if it's really like a, like a big big change for us as, as advertisers i hope it's a big change for individuals I don't like to be tracked myself. I'm actually a guy using an app blocker. I know this sounds funny, but uh, but I'm doing that. Uh, so whatever goes in that direction that keeps you know the marketing being very efficient, the ads working very well, the media dollars being well spent, and preserving privacy at the same time, we totally embrace that. Why not? Hmm. I think Google has some good plans here, but Matthias, you would know better. Yeah, I mean, there. I think there are a lot of discussions now also about this flock and is, is it is it coming or not uh, for Europe? This is still, a, I think, an open open discussion there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I agree on what Maritz is saying. I, I think you know by having this cookie less area, there are also some opportunities coming uh, on which we want to to leverage, of course. Uh, but but still, I I think that the fact that we 
you know, decided to to do this cross-channel optimization with Nexoya um, makes us, you know, we don't need cookies to to build attribution model or stuff like that. We are independent. We can rely on on the paste data. Um, and I think also when it comes then to optimization, when it's on the digital side, uh, we have now with this solution uh, something that is future proof. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Yes. No, that makes total sense. Obviously, we also think into what we can do more with the data, right? And just uh, optimizing it. So we, will, we will keep you posted on, on our faults there and our ideas. Um, but um, yes, no, that sounds good. Um, Marco, did we answer all the questions? Did we tackle um, in the last one? There are, There's another one about target KPIs. Did we answer that one? I don't think yes, so. There, that just we did a, answer. I just published that, um, which is, um, so there are actually two more. Um, how do you handle different target KPIs for different channels or campaigns? For example, uh, SEA goes in ROS, uh, social goes in leads. Um, yes, so we um, basically, you, you saw this multi-step funnel uh, suits up and we basically either try to map them or if, if it's not possible to map them, then split up the portfolio. So then we have two portfolios which we optimize. Um, they can be in one pot or not. So it's a little bit, then it's just the configuration gets a little bit more complex and we need to know better like how it works. Um, nevertheless, if you have on both sides um, some sales or if you can attribute the CLV to the lead, then we can obviously also optimize for that. So it's all, the, the cost is basically the, we, we search for efficiency over all the channels. And as long as the cost is a driver of the efficiency, there is a way to optimize that. Right? Um, I hope this answers your campaign, uh, your, your question. And there was an, another one um, here from. I mean, maybe then... what we can add to that, maybe Marco, in our case, it was easier because at the end of the day, we had one target across the whole, the whole campaign, across the whole channels. Sure. sure. Yes. So usually as a marketer, what I don't like is to plan for different objectives. Like, yeah, I want a little bit of awareness. So I have this KPI. I want a little bit of, uh, but I still want performance. So I want a CPA, but the click needs to be okay. Cause you know, my boss is going to look at the CPC. So at the end of the day, you, you need one objective, if you, if yes. you ask me, at least, at least for your, you know, for your clustering of campaigns. Yeah, we usually suggest to then kind of make portfolio yeah, yeah. which are separated. No, no, I, 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 I got your answer, but, but I think um, it would be much easier if you, from the beginning on, would be starting to target one, right. one KPI, one goal. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think this was also, you know, when we set up the campaign, we actually look into this that, uh, you know, we, we split the campaign into phase. One was really a little bit, uh, you know, optimizing on the start of the calculation and this then cross channel on every channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that also the data then or what you are looking at is aligned and the same then for the hard conversion. So for the sale or the, 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 the quotation. Um, then, of course, I think there is uh, SEA uh, that is a little bit maybe different. You have their, you know, uh, target ROAS and stuff like that. It's a little bit more also sophisticated. So maybe there it could make sense to, to, to split, you know, the SEA part and the display part, I think. Yes. Yes. I mean, and we, we see that the, the channels will always become better in optimizing, we hope, right? Uh, we, we, I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely hope that uh, Google and Facebook and all the others will be very becoming very good in optimizing their own and for your purpose. Um, what we do is basically we go one step back and look at which of these channels then really work best next week. Um, exactly. We a perspective on the problem. And we we will never say that Nexoid does better optimization than Google. We will never do it, right? Um, but the only thing what we do is we tell you if Google is next week very bad because there's a lot of competition or there's the trend is very negative versus Facebook there's the opportunity uh, next week maybe only maybe only one week but this is the level um, we, uh, we have um, to make to make an analogy basically each silo can optimize itself much better than than anyone else because Google is the best at optimizing Google mm -hmm. Facebook is the best at optimizing Facebook but we are the ones you we are the ones doing we have the taps you know we push a little bit more here, a little bit less there, a little bit more here. We, we are tapping across the different tabs. So yes. it's a beer analogy, maybe. I don't know how we can call this. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime, right? Yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> um, so we have like two, three minutes more left. Uh, there's one last question from Chris coming in. 
directed to Maurizio Mattia, which is published that one. I think maybe you can take that up and then um, have a last final one. A uh, question for Maurizio Mattia, are you budget constrained or opportunity constrained? In other words, are you more interested in achieving your mm -hmm. yeah, on a lower budget or driving significantly more conversion on your allocated budget? Yeah, I think I think yeah. Matthias short answer. Yeah, short <laughs> answer. I mean, the the goal is to to keep the budget and take, and to get the maximum out of it. We still believe that we could get more budget, so of course uh, we we try to maximize the conversion on, on the budget we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we we target we buy for media productivity. Yeah. The more we can get out of our say one million or two million three million whatever it is more and conversions mm -hmm. so definitely cpa is the kpi and i think it's okay because analogy again financial we are investing and investments you say they run good or bad if the cost per investment is good or bad yes absolutely and that's uh, i think a very good very good word on the investment <laughs> analogy um so i think we we are almost at the end <laughs> hand over to you invest in exoya yes <laughs> 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 and uh, so, so, so thanks a lot for everybody for these amazing questions um i uh, yeah thank you very much it's nice to see a fire chat with real interaction yes and thanks a lot mattia maurizio for your amazing super honest answers that was really really refreshing also for me although i know the project very well that's good to hear um is there anything else you guys would like to share with the audience here uh, anything else you like to... nope nope yeah i mean we do have fifty percent online discount these days. So if you want to come by generali.ch <laughs> and, and you need a new home insurance, it's I there, it's cheap, that. and it's very good. Uh, don't click the ads. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, from from my side, I mean I really you know, if you if you now you get some curiosity on on what we did, I, I really suggest you to to get in touch with Nexoya. Um, it's a super cool team. They can really adapt to your needs. Uh, maybe you can also start with a first audit or something like that. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's now like the decision if you want to have the data driven, future proof optimization uh, starting from now, or you still want to rely on 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 the Excel report. I think it's uh, it was a decision about that and it's it's up to you. Cool, perfect. That's a very well finished sentence. I couldn't say it better. Nexoya is the Excel with data, which makes you data driven. Or no, no, the other way around. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Thanks a lot uh, to Excel all on the... steroids. Let's call yes, it this. Excel way. on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Yes, so um, Thanks a lot, everybody. I wish you a wonderful lunch or a wonderful uh, breakfast. I saw some people also from the US joining today. So have a good breakfast. And for everybody else, um, have a good day. It was great that you joined. And thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um, so then then hello to the US. So we went global huh, with this call. Very we interesting. Global, yes. Yes, absolutely. Ciao. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you next thank time. You. Thank you, Marco. Ciao. Thank you.